Born Lawrence Sidney Nicasio on September 5, 1956, the late Catholic Bishop Larry, as he was affectionately known, began studying philosophy at Cardinal Glennon College in Missouri in 1981. Thereafter, he pursued theological studies at Kenrick Theological Seminary near St. Louis, and on June 16, 1989, he was ordained a priest. The late bishop was appointed vicar in Belmopan for 13 years, from 1991 to 2004, after which he served as pastor in Orange Walk Town, then pastor of St. Ignatius from 2005 to 2008, and at St. John Vianney from 2008 to 2013. When Pope Francis accepted the resignation of the late Bishop Doric Wright on January 26, 2017, he appointed Nicasio as the new Bishop of Belize City and Belmopan. But even before he went away to become a priest, Nicasio was a leader. He taught at several schools in Belize City and served as the director of the Catholic schools in the Toledo district. He was well loved by the people in those communities. Just five days ago, the Catholic parish and its parishioners in Dangriga led a full service for Nicasio, where, although frail from the ravages of the illness, he was still present. That congregation sang the Our Father in Garifuna, just as he had always loved when he was the chief celebrant, particularly at November 19th church services. Bishop Alvin Bengoche of the Methodist Church, an executive member of the Belize Council of Churches, relived how much his brother in Christ promoted the Garifuna culture and one time invited him to partake in the Mass. He was one who first reached out to me and one who thought that he should reach out to me not only as another person who would serve as bishop in another denomination, but also he recognized that it was important for us as two bishops uh, serving the nation and from the Garifuna population that he should also reach out to me in the sense that we had become religious leaders and it was important, he thought, that as religious leaders, especially from the Garifuna nation, that we should at least be able to know where and what we will do as leaders in order to help to reach out to our Garifuna people and the wider nation. And I thought that that, for him, was so very commendable. The Garifuna people should really remember him for the impact of the work that he did amongst the Garifuna population. I can recall that he was one who also insisted that as a part of the Garifuna Mass on the 19th of November in Dangriga, that he thought that it was important to involve me in one of those services. And I thought that it was so very humbling of him to ensure that I participated in such a Mass. And I will never forget that. Bishop Philip Wright, who heads the Anglican Church, also shared with us his opinion of the late Bishop Nicasio, with whom he shared a few working sessions. He was somewhat soft-spoken um, and jovial, um, but he always brought to our conversations um, some insights into, into issues. And, and I remember him as well as being able to offer anecdotal stories to help make his point. And so he will always be remembered as a, as a somewhat gentle spirit, um, soft-spoken, um, but deep, deep in his, in his reflection and in his contributions uh, to our conversations. We have again lost uh, quite a son of the sword, you know, who was very committed to his ministry, to his church, to his people. And, um, and he will long be remembered as well as a faithful servant, a friend and a colleague. Father Cesar Santa Cruz, also a Catholic priest, has only been in Belize for a little over a month and only met with Bishop Nicasio once, but it was a meeting that he says he will remember for a long time. I came here from Guatemala to cover this mission in November 22nd, 
and I was in a meeting with the mission. It was in December 14th. I had the opportunity to see him, and that was the only one. I could see, well, he was on a wheelchair. I could see him, he was very sick, but I could appreciate the, the, the love that people had for him. He was very kind. I was introduced to him, a really kind, very a kind person. A very kind, he really impressed me with his, his personality. And I could, I could see how people really loved him. Bishop Nicasio, who had been ill for a couple of years, had given an update on his health battle and offered hope to his congregation virtually in May of 2023, following his first round of treatment. I continue uh, treatment and I'm very grateful to the doctor, to the doctors and the nurses who worked along with me. A number of them are uh, uh, Catholics and we, uh, we really have um, been praying for one another and, uh, and have, they've been really offering me uh, loving care um, and I'm very grateful for that. At this point of my journey, uh, we've been communicating uh, with the doctor, uh, a classmate of mine who has been very helpful in um, transporting me to the to the clinic. Uh, we discussed with the doctor about making a, a brief visit home to Belize, and I just want to join you again as we join our hearts in prayer throughout this entire journey that I've been on uh, since last year uh, in July. Uh, thanks again for the, your prayers and many uh, greetings you have sent and in words of encouragement uh, you've sent to me, uh, those who come by uh, to visit. And I thank you very much. The Vatican will determine who will be the next bishop of the Catholic Church. Bishop Nicasio will be laid to rest on Friday following a funeral service in Belmopan. Reporting for News 5, I'm Marion Ali.